Hey everybody, welcome to Down Home Diamond Painting and More. My name's Holly. Y'all pull up a chair, get out what you're working on, and we'll sit and talk for a little while. Tonight, as you can see, I'm still working on Over the Rainbow, but I've made good progress on it, so I'm hoping before next week's Whip and Chat, we should be done with this and into something new. So, how how's everybody's week been going? Everybody been having a pretty good week. I know this past weekend was Mother's Day. So I hope all of you ladies out there with little children, big children, children to be, fur babies, if that's your children, I hope all of you had a really great Mother's Day. I had a pretty good one. Um, you know, it's hard when your children don't live close by, your grandchildren all don't live close by, but, you know, I did get to see my daughter, got to see my granddaughters, and got to see my great-grandchildren, so, all in all, it was a pretty good Mother's Day, I can't complain, wouldn't do any good even if I did complain. It's been a pretty weird week, though, before Mother's Day. It's been one of those weeks that you kind of have to wonder, uh, what's going on? We have had, literally, everybody in the house sick. All the way from the little one, who's not quite 18 months old. And, of course, her only way of letting us know she's sick is crying. A lot. Um, the next one up. He's a little bit older, and he can say he doesn't feel good, but he still has a hard time telling us exactly what it is that doesn't feel good. And then my daughter's been under the weather. She works in the nursing home, so every time she gets to feeling a little under the weather, it's kind of of concern. Because, well, a lot of these old folks, they start to get sick. And because they're already kind of down, sometimes sickness sneaks up on them before they realize that they just don't feel as good as they ought to. They're just not quite as chipper as they ought to be. And she worked a whole lot during this whole last year with the COVID patients and of course, COVID's not running as rampant as it was, thank God. But now and again, they do have one that comes down with COVID-like symptoms. Or they've had a few that's come down with flu-like symptoms. So, you know, every time she comes home and starts saying she doesn't feel good, we begin to wonder, okay, what's she caught now? Uh, her significant other, he has some chronic health problems and... He had a really bad case of COVID. Um, bad case of COVID. Thank goodness he pulled through it with a minimum of medical intervention. But he's got all those lingering things now that they say are happening with COVID brain and whatever they want to call it. It's just all the aftermath of all that infection and all that improper breathing and all that and kind of complicated by other health issues it it's kind of made him a mess so he's not felt up and truly chipper as much as he should this week and me i've just kind of been down under the weather i've just been really tired and that's, that's kind of unusual for me. I go through stretches that I don't feel all that good. But don't have that often that I just feel like, you know, somebody's opened the faucet and drained all my energy off. But as usual, after a few days of just kind of being lazy as an old dog, I have got up and started moving around, feel a little bit better. So all in all, things are going okay for me now. My oldest granddaughter, she's expecting another baby, so 
every little thing that happens, you know, kind of just drains her energy. And she works midnight shift on her job, which doesn't really help with her being able to sleep properly or get good rest or eat regular meals or anything like that because, well, her whole schedule's messed up from beginning to end. But she's a good gal. She works really hard. She tries really hard. But her and her husband both somehow this week ended up coming down with a case of food poisoning. So that kind of put them under the weather for a day or so. And the other two, they're just dealing with seasonal allergies, but that makes you feel like, you know, death warmed over at times when your nose just won't quit running. And then it starts draining and you start getting a little bit of a scratchy throat. And Oh, it's just a miserable thing. It's a miserable thing. But it's all a thing. It's a good thing, bad thing. But it's something we all just do and deal with and get over. I hope everybody else in the world, though, is having a little bit better luck than we are this week. Hope everybody's healthy. Hope everybody's getting their COVID shots, if that's what you're going to do. Hope that, you know, you've had your allergy shots or flu shots or whatever kind of things they're wanting, doctors are wanting to give us. Try to get us all back to some semblance of normalcy in this world. I think it's still going to be a long time coming, but, you know, we can hope. I know last summer was not good. They kept saying, oh, well, if cold weather comes, it'll burn all this stuff off, and then it'll be done for. Well, cold weather didn't help it a whole lot, I'm afraid, but maybe, 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 maybe. Um, it's just kind of run its course, and the vaccines they've got are going to start helping to beat it back so that we can put it under the heading of the flu. One of those things that we get, we get vaccinated for it, might get a mild case of it, but generally overall, it's not too bad. Got some exciting news this week, so... For a while, I might be talking off and on about this because it's going to be a long coming, long range goal, long range plan. Something's going to happen later, like New Year's Day. We just got informed that our band from our little small humble county here in Tennessee has been invited to perform at the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. So needless to say everything has gone into high gear in a lot of ways with the band fundraising because this trip is going to cost $800 a student for a I think there's around 200 members of the band so they gave the parents all summer to you know pay this money in Outback Bowl's willing to take it in increments to ensure their spot help cover their hotel rooms and all of those things and so the parents are working toward that and starting to budget out money for making a trip because well i don't know about some of the other parents but i know my daughter is planning on making the trip of course it's kind of funny for us because well that's back home so to speak since we all came from florida in fact we came from about 40 miles or so from tampa and you know, everybody, when they hear we came from Florida, the first thing they go is, Oh, you're so lucky. So, such a beautiful place. So many beautiful beaches. Uh, no. That's tourist Florida. That's the Florida they advertise and that everybody sees 
in the advertisements and on TV and in the movies. And that's not Florida. That's not the Florida I came from, at least. The Florida I came from is swamps and alligators and snakes and mosquitoes and unbelievable heat and unrelenting humidity and alligators and snakes. A lot of those. A lot of alligators, a lot of snakes. All the alligators do not live in the swamp. All the alligators do not live in the lakes. All the alligators do not stay in the rivers. They come into town. My daughter lived in an apartment complex in the middle of a fair-sized town. And they, in a two-week period, found, I uh, believe it was six alligators. One six-foot one in the swimming pool. A nine-foot one by the dumpster. And various and sundry other shapes and sizes of them scattered throughout the apartment complex. So, that's the Florida we came from. Where, you know, the old adage of, you know, you kind of forget the purpose of the trip was to drain the swamp when you're up to your butt in alligators. Well... That's the Florida we know. It's where you're up to your butt and alligators. Or snakes. Most of the time poisonous snakes. And, and they tend to um, pop up in some of the most unusual places too. Like in your bathroom. Or in your front yard. Or going across your kitchen floor. So, needless to say, when folks tell me how lucky I am that I grew up in Florida, I tell them, mm, no, y'all are really lucky that you grew up in Tennessee, because here, we don't have alligators, and we only have a couple of kinds of poisonous snakes, none of them in the water, at least not in the part of Tennessee I live in, and the weather is cool enough here that the snakes don't usually get that aggressive, and they just prefer to stay in the woods. So, you don't usually find too many of them in your yard. Just a much better spot for me. A much better spot for me. But, I still have family that live in Florida, and they love it there. They wouldn't dream of moving away from there. And I am all for that. If that's what they want, more power to them. Not me. I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Because I like cool weather. And I like waterfalls. And I like mountains. And I like all those things I was thinking today. I was making a little trip with my daughter and son-in-law. And was looking at the landscape as we were driving by and thought to myself, Lord, I don't know how I ever lived in a place that was so flat that you literally could see for miles, except for the excessive number of people, excessive number of buildings, because you're sure not looking at landscape down there anymore. Even the little town that I grew up in has just changed so much they've built so many new things they've changed so much about it that it's not the place i grew up anymore it's just not when i grew up there even though i didn't live right in town you could go to town you could walk down the street at 10 11 o'clock at night and you never worried. If your kids were out playing and they were gone and you hadn't seen them for a few hours, you still didn't have to worry about them. They were, they were safe. It was a good little town. Everybody knew everybody. And, yeah, we watched out for each other's kids. And it was not unusual when my kids were growing up for them to get up on a, a Saturday morning and decide that they and their friends were going to 
take off and go do something for the day. And this was before cell phones. This is when pagers were a big thing. The ones where you put in the number and then you had to wait on them to call you back. So, you know, my kids would get up in, on a Saturday morning and they'd say, Hey, you know, me and, and Stevie and Katie and all these others, we're all going to go do such and such. And we're going to be gone a while. And if you need us, you know. Send us a message on the pager and we'll go to somebody's house and call you back. And I never really worried about them. At least not as far as people predators. Now my son, he was a very adventuresome one. He never met a critter. Be it have legs, be it not have legs, be it have scales, be it have whatever. He never met a critter he didn't like. So it didn't bother him at all to go to some of the lakes even the ones that had alligators in them, and go fishing. And forget about the sun going down and it getting dark and those things, you know, kind of get a little more active at night. And the fact that he liked to go fishing in a particular park, and, well, that park closed at dark. So we've had a few times that I've had to go look for him and I found him fishing long after he should have been home. A few times I've actually had to call for reinforcements to help me go find him because, well, he started out going one place and ended up something, doing something else going somewhere else. But I think that's the nature of kids. Particularly in the age when we could turn them loose and let them go and know that we could get them back. We didn't have to worry about the people predators. We just had to worry about, in my case, you know, something large and scaly with a lot of teeth. Because he'd sit right there on the edge of a lake and he'd fish. And the alligator right out there in the water looking at him. And I ever, I asked him, I asked him, I said, do you ever, ever, ever worry about that alligator coming up there and, and coming after your fish or coming after your bait? And he goes, well, if they head toward the shore usually, and I know they're bound and determined, they're coming on shore and they want what I got. He said, I'll throw it back in the water and give it to them. And I said, well, that's cool, except for the fact you're teaching them that you will feed them. And that kind of makes them a nuisance. He said, well, I didn't think of it that way, but... You're right. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I said, well, maybe you shouldn't be fishing where they're at so much. But that's, you know, the nature of boys and the nature of kids, at least back then. Now you have to watch them like a hawk. You can't hardly let them go to your front yard with a fence and a huge Rottweiler out there without worrying about somebody's going to snatch them up and run off with them. The little town I live in now... Reminds me a great deal of the little town I grew up in. Um, it's quiet. The crime rate is very, 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 very low. The neighborhoods, all the neighbors kind of know who's got kids, who don't have kids. And it's not unusual to see all the kids out running around up and down the streets and riding their bikes around the neighborhood and just going and doing what children do and Kind of brings me back to the days when I could do that and when my kids could do that. And I think it's good for my grandchildren to be able to go outside and be safe for a little while. Let them, you know, be children. Not have to worry about strangers and worry about kidnapping and worry about all those things. It's just, it's... It's nice to be able to look out in the yard and know that they're going to be in the yard when you're looking for them. Unless they've decided to go wandering off. Which I've got one great-grand. One grand and one great-grand. That um, don't think about the consequences of their actions. Things, the consequences and things like that just don't occur to them. 
They just don't think about, well, what would happen if I fall in the water or what would happen if I fell in a hole or all this. They just don't think about that. But that's also the nature of little kids. So hopefully as they get older, they'll kind of start associating consequences with actions. So those we watch. The older ones, we kind of let them go, make their own decisions on where they want to go and what they want to do as long as they kind of give us a itinerary on what they're doing and where they're going. And we can kind of keep up with their activity. The 17-year-old, she's involved in so many things with school that we have to practically keep a calendar for her. She's the one that's getting to go to Tampa. The 13-year-old, she'd rather stay at home. She couldn't care less about what's going on around the rest of the world. As long as nobody tells her she has to leave home, she's good. So, I don't know that we'll ever get her to get involved in anything that requires extensive traveling from home. She's just... She's going to be a homebody her whole life, I think. Unless all of a sudden one day she just breaks loose and decides that I'm going to go see the world. Bye, y'all. Maybe, maybe not. My son told me this week that he and his wife and their roommate are all considering moving to Texas. Well... I don't know how I feel about that, but at least Texas is somewhere that he's lived before. Twice, in fact. The first time he got talked into going to Texas with the promise of a job and a place to live and all these sunshine and roses, and it's like, okay. He went. That lasted about a month. He got there and discovered he'd been lied to. That he didn't have a job. He did have a place to live, but he didn't have a job. And he had sold his car to go. So now he was out there, no car, no job, no way to go look for a job. Because they lived 12 miles from the nearest town. And that was a little bit too much of a walk for him to try to go hunt a job. So he called, wanted to come back home. So I went and got him, brought him back home. And then later on, he and his wife decided that they would move to Texas, and he was okay. He, I think, given proper circumstances, he'd probably still be in Texas, but she got homesick and didn't want to stay there, and he really didn't want to come home, so she left and came home anyway, said, well, I think I'll just go back to Florida and see how things look there and make up my mind if I'm coming back or not. And after about three or four weeks, she called him and said, no, I'm not coming back. I'm staying in Te in Florida and you can stay in Texas if that's really what you want to do. Well, no, they weren't going to have a long distant marriage. She didn't want to be in Texas. He wasn't going to stay in Texas. So he moved back home again, but now they're going to venture out and try to go again. So, he's a little older. I'm a little older. I've realized I can't hold him at home. He's got to go. He's got to explore life and settle where he wants to be because, well, I stayed in Florida a lot longer than I wanted to because, well, I thought I owed it to my mother because that's where she was and... As she got down toward the end of her life and she and I talked, I told her that I had stayed there because of that. And she told me, I wish I'd have known that. She said, because I'd have packed your stuff and sent you on your way a long time ago. She said, I thought you were here because you wanted to be. Nope, stayed because I thought that's what you wanted. So, I've kind of learned that lesson from being the kid that wanted to leave and felt an obligation and... Looking at it as a mom that knows that can't tie my kids down because they need to do their thing. Well, I guess I have sat here and rambled on enough for tonight. It's 
you know, it's not real early, but it's not super, super late either. But, you know, I've had a kind of a long day with all the traveling around today I've done and a lot of other things I had to get accomplished. So, I guess I'm probably going to close this out for tonight. And I'll continue working on this rose. And like I said, next time we get together, I'll probably be working on something different. Because I don't think it'll take me too long to finish this on out. And I'll show you a picture of it. I'll have a picture next time we get together so you can see what it looked like when I got it finished. And we'll start a new project and have something new and nice and different. Maybe one of the ones that I've shown in an unboxing video. Maybe I'll work on one of those. I got some things coming up for a little bit later in the year. Some gifts that I'm going to be making and I'll be doing some working on them and some recordings. Got one that I'm work going to be working on for a gift for some friends and I'm going to record my progress on it but I'm not going to push publish that one until they get the gift because I don't see it before I get it fixed up for them but we're going to close on out for now and we're going to you know move on to other things for this evening I'm sure you folks got places to be and things to do as always can't spend all your time sitting around here listening to me ramble on and chatter on y'all have any comments any concerns, any questions, anything you might want to ask me, be sure to leave them down in the comments. And I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me this evening. I've enjoyed spending my time with you. So as we close out, as always, my wish for you is may the sun shine warm on your face. May the rain fall soft on your garden. May love find you always. Y'all come on back. We'll talk some more next time. Bye, y'all.